first let me introduce myself just real briefly. Again, my name is Jeremy Rock, and uh, interestingly enough, I used to raise pigs. Um, so mobile marketing was not, you couldn't like hold your phone while you had the gloves and the boots and stuff on, so it wasn't my deal back then. Um, but then I went through uh, engineering school at Iowa State University and decided that wasn't for me. And I went through business school and finished that. Uh, got into supply chain management, then got into real estate as an agent, then got into real estate investment, and now, interestingly enough, I'm landing on this. And the way that all ties together is that marketing was the common bind in all the things that I've been interested in in my life. Um, marketing is fascinating to me, and the mobile marketing arena is interesting because I'm, I, I, let me actually def, define for you how I'm looking at mobile marketing. If you think that mobile marketing is text message campaigns or something, that's just this tiny little bit. When I talk about mobile marketing, what I'm referring to is really kind of everything that we're talking about today. Because the real question is, how do I reach the mobile consumer? It's not about necessarily just reaching them on their mobile device. It's not just getting into their phone or anything like that. It's the combination of all of it. Because today's consumer doesn't just sit down on their couch and watch TV. They don't sit down and read the newspaper and, and have that be the only thing they do. Today's consumer is mobile. They're out and about, and they get messages from everywhere. And so the common thing to tie together amongst all four of these parts of today's presentation is that, have you heard that direct mail is dead? How many people have heard that? It's not dead. It's fantastic. Did you sense that he might be doing it a little different now than we've done it for years? How many people have heard that, oh, your, your website is an old thing? It's not. Your website just needs to be what consumers expect today, and it needs to be a tool that can satisfy that interaction they're looking for. And the same with email marketing. God knows, please raise your hand if you've heard email marketing is old. Right? And we read articles and we hear stuff all the time. The email marketing is outdated. You've got to do something different now. God knows, email is humongous. It's about how you deliver that message, though. So today's mobile consumer is kind of what I want to focus on. Let's see here if I can click this thing. It no longer makes economic sense to go out and send an advertising message to many in the hopes of persuading a few. The whole idea today is target marketing, right? The smaller you can define your target market, the less expensive it is to actually convert them into customers. So putting an ad in the newspaper, say the New York Times, is quite expensive. But if you're trying to target young women between 16 and 22 that enjoy horseback riding, you'll get them with the New York Times maybe in 1955, because everybody had the New York Times, right? But just because it's out there in that printed piece of paper doesn't mean you're reaching that audience. Maybe you can define that the audience of however many millions of Americans read the paper can be narrowed down to the 55,000 people that fit that niche that you're hitting. That's really the important part that you want to focus on. Now mobile specifically as a medium is able to touch that prospect at the right time, in the right place, with the right solution for what they're looking for, but it has to be part of the big puzzle. It has to be part of your overall marketing strategy. Um, we need to understand why and how your audience uses technology, and then start trying to align your communications with them. Now, I'm sure there's somebody in the room who has full knowledge that their key customer is a very tech-savvy youth, and there's someone right next to you whose key customer is a 65 to 80-year-old retiree that, want, that needs somebody to manage their money for them so it lasts their whole life. Totally different audiences, but technology is touching both of those groups. How many people would believe me if I told you that the average person on Facebook, like Dave said, is not 16 years old? A lot of us, maybe because it's not the way we use it as business owners, because we're focused on what we're doing every day, doesn't mean your target audience isn't using it. My grandmother just turned 87, 88. She's on Facebook. She emails me, and she responds to my text messages. Strange, right? I never would have expected that just a couple of years ago. And honestly, this phone is smarter than I am, right? But it's become a part of my life. Uh, so. Pay attention to how your audience uses technology and then try to step into those places. Smartphones. I think they might be reinventing the connection between you and your customer. If 
you could use that smartphone as a way to touch your customer with their permission. Please don't touch your customer without their permission. It's really good. Let me share a couple things with you. Did you know that more than 50% of consumers have their cell phone with them all the time? And when I mean all the time, I mean like it's on the toilet outside the shower curtain. <laughs> Did you know that 70 some percent, sorry I can't remember the number, literally answered a survey that said, I would rather lose my wallet than my phone, right? Which kind of makes sense because look up the uh, Samsung Nexus phone. It's got near field technology. Google that and see what you think of that. Unbelievable stuff that you can just pay for stuff by going whoop, right across the checkout lane. And that will be all over the place next year. It's not like it's some crazy thing in China that we're not going to see for five years, okay? Um, also, did you know that people respond to text messages <coughs> within 30 seconds? And that's 95% of text messages they respond to? You can't say that for email in general, but now if you focus the email that you're using, you can get them to respond, right? Kind of like the pearls. If I give you a direct postcard that just says, hi, neighbor, we'd love to do a refi for you. It's not going to be nearly as successful as, hi, Jeremy. We see that you've bought your home three years ago. You probably are above 5%. Do you know you can save $26 a week if you refi right now because we can get you a 3.75 mortgage, whatever, okay? It's about being focused. So that cell phone, that smartphone, is a tool for you to reach those clients, not by force, but by permission. Another thing I want you to write down, do a little bit of Google research, Google the word permission-based marketing. And just look at the realm of things that come up. Understand that everything you do, whether someone calls it that or not, is that. Today, as a consumer, do you want to be marketed to without your permission? How many people actually open a piece of mail that doesn't look like it's really for you? It goes right in the file, right? The round file. Email is the same way. Everything is the same way. So you've got to be focused. You've got to find a way to be permission-based, even if it is an older style media that's been around forever. Next thing I want to point out is that you need to focus on the core problem that your business solves and then let people know that you solve it. Again, this is kind of the core of what we're doing. Today's consumer is looking for solutions to their problems even when they're walking down the street, even when they are sitting in traffic on a bus, hopefully not when they're driving a bus. People want solutions at the moment they think of it. In fact, they might be thinking on the bus ride home from downtown, crap, I forgot to get that thing my wife called and asked me for, and they're looking on their phone to see where's the nearest place to get that thing when I get off the bus before I get in my car, or when I get in my car before I get all the way to the house. That's the place you really need to be because that's how they're using it, and you need to be able to be sure that the fact you can solve that problem for them is known in the place where they're at when they need you. This is an interesting one. Search is a marketing method that didn't exist a decade ago, but it provides the most efficient and it's inexpensive way for businesses to find leads. This affects every one of the four of us speakers in terms of the way that we have to touch consumers and help you touch your prospects. Everyone is searching, and it doesn't matter if they're searching online, they're searching in their daily life. They're searching everywhere they are. It's about the spin. It's about the way that you deliver your message and make sure that you're visible. It's really inexpensive because you're going to now choose instead of, let me use a dentist for example. I'm a dentist. I know that people are only going to drive five miles to be able to come to a dentist. But there's seven dentists within my five mile radius. How do I reach everybody? Tell me, do you think it's more intelligent to send a postcard to everybody in those four zip codes? Or is it more intelligent to find a way to send a pearlized postcard to the people who have teeth still, the people who have been to the dentist, the people who have an income to be able to afford going to the dentist? You can do those kinds of things. You can target and you need to because it makes it much more inexpensive than what's often in the back of our heads from things that we've heard in the past or stories that we've heard in the past. There are a couple things that, that uh, I also want you to write down. These are very easy things for you to start to utilize, and this is actually some of the stuff that we do on Google Reach. Google Places.